The General Dynamics F-16 Fighting Falcon is a single-engine supersonic multirole fighter aircraft originally developed by General Dynamics now Lockheed Martin for the United States Air Force USAF. Designed as an air superiority day fighter, it evolved into a successful all-weather multirole aircraft. Over 4,600 aircraft have been built since production was approved in 1976. Although no longer being purchased by the U.S. Air Force, improved versions are being built for export customers. In 1993, General Dynamics sold its aircraft manufacturing business to the Lockheed Corporation, which in turn became part of Lockheed Martin after a 1995 merger with Martin Marietta. The Fighting Falcon's key features include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, side mounted control stick to ease control while maneuvering, an ejection seat reclined 30 degrees from vertical to reduce the effect of G forces on the pilot, and the first use of a relaxed static stability, fly-by-wire flight control system which helps to make it a nimble aircraft. The F-16 has an internal M61 Vulcan cannon and 11 locations for mounting weapons and other mission equipment. The F-16's official name is, "...Fighting Falcon", but, "...Viper", is commonly used by its pilots and crews, due to a perceived resemblance to a Viper Snake as well as the Colonial Viper Starfighter on Battlestar Galactica, which aired at the time the F 16 entered service. In addition to active duty in the U.S. Air Force, Air Force Reserve Command, and Air National Guard units, the aircraft is also used by the USAF Aerial Demonstration Team, the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds, and as an adversary aggressor aircraft by the United States. States Navy. The F-16 has also been procured to serve in the air forces of 25 other nations. As of 2015, it is the world's most numerous fixed-wing aircraft in military service. <laughs> <laughs> development Lightweight fighter program Experiences in the Vietnam War revealed the need for air superiority fighters and better air-to-air -air training for fighter pilots. Based on his experiences in the Korean War and as a fighter tactics instructor in the early 1960s, Colonel John Boyd with mathematician Thomas Christie developed the energy maneuverability theory to model a fighter aircraft's performance in combat. Boyd's work called for a small, lightweight aircraft that could maneuver with the minimum possible energy loss and which also incorporated an increased thrust-to-weight ratio. In the late 1960s, Boyd gathered a group of like-minded innovators who became known as the Fighter Mafia, and in 1969, they secured Department of Defense funding for General Dynamics and Northrop to study design concepts based on the theory. Air Force FX proponents remained hostile to the concept because they perceived it as a threat to the F-15 program. However, the Air Force's leadership understood that its budget would not allow it to purchase enough F-15 aircraft to satisfy all of its missions. The advanced day fighter concept, renamed FXX, gained civilian political support under the reform-minded Deputy Secretary of Defense David Packard, who favored the idea of competitive prototyping. As a result, in May 1971, the Air Force Prototype Study Group was established, with Boyd a key member, and two of its six proposals would be funded, one being the Lightweight Fighter LWF. The request for proposals issued on 6 January 1972 called for a £20,000 class air-to-air -air day fighter with a good turn rate, acceleration, and range, and optimized for combat at speeds of Mach 0.6 to 1.6 and altitudes of 30,000 to 40,000 feet 9, to 12, meters. This was the region where USAF studies predicted most future air combat would occur. The anticipated average flyaway cost of a production version was $3 million. 
This production plan, though, was only notional, as the USAF had no firm plans to procure the winner. Topic. Selection of finalists and fly-off Five companies responded, and in 1972, the air staff selected General Dynamics Model 401 and Northrop's P600 for the follow-on prototype development and testing phase. GD and Northrop were awarded contracts worth $37.9 million and $39.8 million to produce the YF-16 and YF-17, respectively, with first flights of both prototypes planned for early 1974. To overcome resistance in the Air Force hierarchy, the fighter mafia and other LWF proponents successfully advocated the idea of complementary fighters in a high-cost, low-cost force mix. The high-low mix would allow the USAF to be able to afford sufficient fighters for its overall fighter force structure requirements. The mix gained broad acceptance by the time of the prototype's fly-off, defining the relationship of the LWF and the F-15. The YF-16 was developed by a team of General Dynamics engineers led by Robert H. Widmer. The first YF-16 was rolled out on 13 December 1973. Its 90-minute maiden flight was made at the Air Force Flight Test Center AFFTC, at Edwards AFB, California, on 2 February 1974. Its actual first flight occurred accidentally during a high-speed taxi test on 20 January 1974. While gathering speed, a roll control oscillation caused a fin of the portside wingtip mounted missile and then the starboard stabilator to scrape the ground, and the aircraft then began to veer off the runway. The test pilot, Phil Eastricker, decided to lift off to avoid a potential crash, safely landing six minutes later. The slight damage was quickly repaired and the official first flight occurred on time. The YF-16's first supersonic flight was accomplished on 5 February 1974, and the second YF-16 prototype first flew on 9 May 1974. This was followed by the first flights of Northrop's YF-17 prototypes on 9 June and 21 August 1974, respectively. During the fly-off, the YF-16s completed 330 sorties for a total of 417 flight hours, the YF-17s flew 288 sorties, covering 345 hours. Topic Air combat fighter competition increased interest turned the LWF into a serious acquisition program. North Atlantic Treaty Organization NATO allies Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, and Norway were seeking to replace their F-104G Starfighter fighter bombers. In early 1974, they reached an agreement with the U.S. that if the USAF ordered the LWF winner, they would consider ordering it as well. The USAF also needed to replace its F-105 Thunderchief and F-4 Phantom II fighter bombers. The U.S. Congress sought greater commonality in fighter procurements by the Air Force and Navy, and in August 1974 redirected Navy funds to a new Navy Air Combat Fighter program that would be a navalized fighter bomber variant of the LWF. The four NATO allies had formed the Multinational Fighter Program Group MFPG and pressed for a U.S. decision by December 1974, thus, the USAF accelerated testing. To reflect this serious intent to procure a new fighter bomber, the LWF program was rolled into a new Air Combat Fighter ACF competition in an announcement by U.S. Secretary of Defense James R. Schlesinger in April 1974. The ACF would not be a pure fighter, but multi-role, and Schlesinger made it clear that any ACF order would be in addition to the F-15, which extinguished opposition to the LWF. ACF also raised the stakes for GD and Northrop because it brought in competitors' intent on securing what was touted at the time as the arms deal of the century. 
These were Dassault Breguet's proposed Mirage F1 M53, the Anglo French SEPE CAT Jaguar, and the proposed Saab 37E Eurofighter. Northrop offered the P530 Cobra, which was similar to the YF 17. The Jaguar and Cobra were dropped by the MFPG early on, leaving two European and the two US candidates. On the 11th of September 1974, the US Air Force confirmed plans to order the winning ACF design to equip five tactical fighter wings. Though computer modeling predicted a close contest, the YF-16 proved significantly quicker going from one maneuver to the next and was the unanimous choice of those pilots that flew both aircraft. On the 13th of January 1975, Secretary of the Air Force John L. McClucas announced the YF-16 as the winner of the ACF competition. The chief reasons given by the Secretary were the YF-16's lower operating costs, greater range, and maneuver performance that was significantly better than that of the YF-17, especially at supersonic speeds. Another advantage of the YF-16 unlike the YF-17 was its use of the Pratt & Whitney F-100 turbofan engine, the same powerplant used by the F-15, such commonality would lower the cost of engines for both programs. Secretary McClucas announced that the USAF planned to order at least 650, possibly up to 1,400 production F-16s. In the Navy Air Combat Fighter NACF competition, on 2 May 1975 the Navy selected the YF-17 as the basis for what would become the McDonnell Douglas F. A-18 Hornet. <laughs> Commencement of production The U.S. Air Force initially ordered 15 full-scale development. FSD aircraft 11 single seat and 4 two seat models for its flight test program but was reduced to 8 6 F16A single seaters and 2 F16B two seaters The YF16 design was altered for the production F16 The fuselage was lengthened by 10.6 in 0.269 meters a larger nose radome was fitted for the APG-66 radar, wing area was increased from 280 square feet 26 square meters to 300 square feet 28 square meters, the tailfin height was decreased, the ventral fins were enlarged, two more stores stations were added, and a single door replaced the original nosewheel double doors. The F-16's weight was increased by 25% over the YF-16 by these modifications. The FSD F-16s were manufactured by General Dynamics in Fort Worth, Texas at United States Air Force Plant 4 in late 1975. The first F-16A rolled out on the 20th of October 1976 and first flew on the 8th of December. The initial two-seat model achieved its first flight on 8 August 1977. The initial production standard F-16A flew for the first time on 7 August 1978 and its delivery was accepted by the USAF on 6 January 1979. The F-16 was given its formal nickname of Fighting Falcon. On 21 July 1980, entering USAF operational service with the 34th Tactical Fighter Squadron, 388th Tactical Fighter Wing at Hill AFB in Utah on 1 October 1980, on 7 June 1975, the four European partners, now known as the European Participation Group, signed up for 348 aircraft at the Paris Air Show. This was split among the European Participation Air Forces EPAF as 116 for Belgium, 58 for Denmark, 102 for the Netherlands, and 72 for Norway. Two European production lines, one in the Netherlands at Fokker's Schiphol Oost facility and the other at SABCA's Gosselies plant in Belgium, would produce 184 and 164 units respectively. Norway's Kongsberg Varpenvabrik and Denmark's Terma A.S. also manufactured parts and subassemblies for EPAF aircraft. 
European co-production was officially launched on 1 July 1977 at the Fokker factory. Beginning in November 1977, Fokker produced components were sent to Fort Worth for fuselage assembly, then shipped back to Europe for final assembly of EPAF aircraft at the Belgian plant on 15 February 1978. Deliveries to the Belgian Air Force began in January 1979. The first Royal Netherlands Air Force aircraft was delivered in June 1979. In 1980, the first aircraft were delivered to the Royal Norwegian Air Force by SABCA and to the Royal Danish Air Force by Fokker. During the late 1980s and 1990s, Turkish Aerospace Industries produced 232 Block 30, 40 50ths F 16s on a production line in Ankara under license for the Turkish Air Force. Thai also produced 46 Block 40s for Egypt in the mid-1990s and 30 Block 50 from 2010. Korean Aerospace Industries opened a production line for the KF-16 program, producing 140 Block 52s from the mid-1990s to mid-2000s decade. If India had selected the F-16IN for its medium multi-role combat aircraft procurement, a sixth F-16 production line would have been built in India. In May 2013, Lockheed Martin stated there were currently enough orders to keep producing the F-16 until 2017. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Improvements and upgrades. One change made during production was augmented pitch control to avoid deep stall conditions at high angles of attack. The stall issue had been raised during development, but had originally been discounted. Model tests of the YF-16 conducted by the Langley Research Center revealed a potential problem, but no other laboratory was able to duplicate it. YF-16 flight tests were not sufficient to expose the issue. Later flight testing on the FSD aircraft demonstrated there was a real concern. In response, the area of the horizontal stabilizer were increased by 25% on the Block 15 aircraft in 1981 and later retrofitted to earlier aircraft. In addition, a manual override switch to disable the horizontal stabilizer flight limiter was prominently placed on the control console, allowing the pilot to regain control of the horizontal stabilizers which the flight limiters otherwise lock in place and recover. Besides reducing the risk of deep stalls, the larger horizontal tail also improved stability and permitted faster takeoff rotation. In the 1980s, the Multinational Staged Improvement Program (MSIP) was conducted to evolve the F-16's capabilities, mitigate risks during technology development, and ensure the aircraft's worth. The program upgraded the F-16 in three stages. The MSIP process permitted the quick introduction of new capabilities, at lower costs and with reduced risks compared to traditional independent upgrade programs. In 2012, the USAF had allocated $2.8 billion to upgrade 350 F-16s while waiting for the F-35 to enter service. One key upgrade has been an auto GCAS ground collision avoidance system to reduce instances of controlled flight into terrain. Onboard power and cooling capacities limit the scope of upgrades, which often involve the addition of more power-hungry avionics. Lockheed won many contracts to upgrade foreign operators F16s. BAE Systems also offers various F-16 upgrades, receiving orders from South Korea, Oman, Turkey, and the U.S. Air National Guard. BAE lost the South Korean contract due to a price breach in November 2014. In 2012, the USAF assigned the total upgrade contract to Lockheed Martin. Upgrades include Raytheon's center display unit, which replaces several analog flight instruments with a single digital display. In 2013, sequestration budget cuts cast doubt on the USAF's ability to complete the Combat Avionics Programmed Extension Suite (CAPES), a part of secondary programs such as Taiwan's F-16 upgrade. 
ACC's General Mike Hostage stated that if he only had money for SLEP service life extension program or CAPES, he would fund SLEP to keep the aircraft flying. Lockheed Martin responded to talk of CAPES cancellation with a fixed price upgrade package for foreign users. CAPES was not included in the Pentagon's 2015 budget request. The USAF said that the upgrade package will still be offered to the Republic of China Air Force, and Lockheed said that some common elements with the F-35 will keep the radar's unit costs down. In 2014, the USAF issued a RFI to SLEP 300 F-16C, Ds. Topic. Production relocation To make more room for assembly of its newer F-35 Lightning II fighter aircraft, Lockheed Martin moved the F-16 production from Fort Worth, Texas to its plant in Greenville, South Carolina. Lockheed delivered the last F-16 from Fort Worth to the Iraqi Air Force on 14 November 2017, ending 40 years of F-16 production there. The company is hoping to finish the Greenville move and restart production in 2019, though engineering and modernization work will remain in Fort Worth. A gap in orders made it possible to stop production during the move. After completing orders for the last Iraqi purchase, the company was negotiating an F 16 sale to Bahrain that would be produced in Greenville. This contract was signed in June 2018. Topic. Design Topic. Overview The F-16 is a single-engine, highly maneuverable, supersonic, multi-role tactical fighter aircraft. It is much smaller and lighter than its predecessors, but uses advanced aerodynamics and avionics, including the first use of a relaxed static stability, fly-by-wire RSS, FBW, flight control system, to achieve enhanced maneuver performance. Highly nimble, the F-16 was the first fighter aircraft purpose-built to pull 9G maneuvers and can reach a maximum speed of over Mach 2. Innovations include a frameless bubble canopy for better visibility, a side-mounted control stick, and a reclined seat to reduce G-force effects on the pilot. It is armed with an internal M61 Vulcan cannon in the left-wing route and has multiple locations for mounting various missiles, bombs and pods. It has a thrust-to-weight ratio greater than 1, providing power to climb and vertical acceleration. The F-16 was designed to be relatively inexpensive to build and simpler to maintain than earlier generation fighters. The airframe is built with about 80% aviation-grade aluminum alloys, 8% steel, 3% composites, and 1.5% titanium. The leading edge flaps, stabilators, and ventral fins make use of bonded aluminum honeycomb structures and graphite epoxy lamination coatings. The number of lubrication points, fuel line connections, and replaceable modules is significantly lower than preceding fighters. 80% of the access panels can be accessed without stands. The air intake was placed so it was rearward of the nose but forward enough to minimize air flow losses and reduce aerodynamic drag, although the LWF program called for a structural life of 4,000 flight hours, capable of achieving 7.33 grams with 80% internal fuel, GD's engineers decided to design the F-16's airframe life for 8,000 hours and for 9G maneuvers on full internal fuel. This proved advantageous when the aircraft's mission changed from solely air to air combat to multi-role operations. Changes in operational use and additional systems have increased weight, necessitating multiple structural strengthening programs. Topic: General configuration. 
The F-16 has a cropped delta wing incorporating wing fuselage blending and forebody vortex control strakes, a fixed geometry, underslung air intake with splitter plate to the single turbofan jet engine, a conventional triplane empennage arrangement with all moving horizontal stabilator tailplanes, a pair of ventral fins beneath the fuselage AFT of the wing's trailing edge, and a tricycle landing gear configuration with the AFT retracting, steerable nose gear deploying a short distance behind the inlet lip. There is a boom-style aerial refueling receptacle located behind the single-piece bubble canopy of the cockpit. Split flap speed brakes are located at the AFT end of the wing body fairing, and a tailhook is mounted underneath the fuselage. A fairing beneath the rudder often houses ECM equipment or a drag chute. Later F-16 models feature a long dorsal fairing along the fuselage's spine. Housing additional equipment or fuel, aerodynamic studies in the 1960s demonstrated that the vortex lift Phenomenon could be harnessed by highly swept wing configurations to reach higher angles of attack, using leading edge vortex flow off a slender lifting surface. As the F-16 was being optimized for high combat agility, GD's designers chose a slender cropped delta wing with a leading edge sweep of 40 degrees and a straight trailing edge. To improve maneuverability, a variable camber wing with a NACA 64A204 airfoil was selected. The camber is adjusted by leading edge and trailing edge flap herons linked to a digital flight control system (FCS) regulating the flight envelope. The F-16 has a moderate wing loading, reduced by fuselage lift. The vortex lift effect is increased by leading edge extensions, known as strakes. Strakes act as additional short span, triangular wings running from the wing root the juncture with the fuselage to a point further forward on the fuselage. Blended into the fuselage and along the wing root, the strake generates a high-speed vortex that remains attached to the top of the wing as the angle of attack increases, generating additional lift and allowing greater angles of attack without stalling. Strakes allow a smaller, lower aspect ratio wing, which increases roll rates and directional stability while decreasing weight. Deeper wing roots also increase structural strength and internal fuel volume. <laughs> <laughs> Armament Early F-16s could be armed with up to six AIM-9 Sidewinder heat-seeking short-range air-to-air missiles by employing rail launchers on each wingtip, as well as radar-guided AIM-7 Sparrow medium-range AAMs in a weapons mix. More recent versions support the AIM-120 AIM RAAM. The aircraft can carry various other AAMs, a wide variety of air-to-ground missiles, rockets or bombs, electronic countermeasures ECM, navigation, targeting or weapons pods, and fuel tanks on nine hardpoints, six under the wings, two on wingtips, and one under the fuselage. Two other locations under the fuselage are available for sensor or radar pods. The F-16 carries a 20 mm in M61A1 Vulcan cannon for close-range aerial combat and strafing. The 20 mm cannon is mounted inside the fuselage to the left of the cockpit. <laughs> Negative stability and fly-by-wire The F-16 is the first production fighter aircraft intentionally designed to be slightly aerodynamically unstable, also known as relaxed static stability (RSS) to improve maneuverability. Most aircraft are designed with positive static stability, which induces aircraft to return to straight and level flight attitude if the pilot releases the controls. This reduces maneuverability as the inherent stability has to be overcome. Aircraft with negative stability are designed to deviate from controlled flight and thus be more maneuverable. At supersonic speeds the F-16 gains stability eventually positive due to aerodynamic changes, to counter the tendency to depart from controlled flight. 
and avoid the need for constant trim inputs by the pilot. The F-16 has a quadruplex four-channel fly-by-wire (FBW) flight control system (FLCS). The flight control computer (FLCC) accepts pilot input from the stick and rudder controls and manipulates the control surfaces in such a way as to produce the desired result without inducing control loss. The FLCC conducts thousands of measurements per second on the aircraft's flight attitude to automatically counter deviations from the pilot set flight path, leading to a common aphorism among pilots You don't fly an F 16, it flies you. The FLCC further incorporates limiters governing movement in the three main axes based on attitude, airspeed and angle of attack AOA. these prevent control surfaces from inducing instability such as slips or skids, or a high AOA inducing a stall. The limiters also prevent maneuvers that would exert more than a 9 grams load. Flight testing has revealed that, assaulting. Multiple limiters at high AOA and low speed can result in an AOA far exceeding the 25 degrees limit, colloquially referred to as departing. This causes a deep stall, a near freefall at 50 degrees to 60 degrees AOA, either upright or inverted. While at a very high AOA, the aircraft's attitude is stable but control surfaces are ineffective, the pitch limiter locks the stabilators at an extreme pitch up or pitch down attempting to recover, this can be overridden so the pilot can rock the nose via pitch control to recover, unlike the YF-17, which had hydromechanical controls serving as a backup to the FBW, General Dynamics took the innovative step of eliminating mechanical linkages between the control stick and rudder pedals, and the flight control surfaces. The F-16 is entirely reliant on its electrical systems to relay flight commands, instead of traditional mechanically linked controls, leading to the early moniker of the electric jet. The quadruplex design permits graceful degradation in flight control response in that the loss of one channel renders the FLCS a triplex system. The FLCC began as an analog system on the A, B variants, but has been supplanted by a digital computer system beginning with the F16C, D Block 40. The F-16's controls suffered from a sensitivity to static electricity or electrostatic discharge ESD. Up to 70–80% of the C, D model's electronics were vulnerable to ESD. <laughs> <laughs> Cockpit and ergonomics A key feature of the F-16's cockpit is the exceptional field of view. The single-piece, bird-proof polycarbonate bubble canopy provides 360 degrees all-round visibility, with a 40 degrees look-down angle over the side of the aircraft, and 15 degrees down over the nose compared to the common 12 to 13 degrees of preceding aircraft, the pilot's seat is elevated for this purpose. Furthermore, the F-16's canopy lacks the forward bow frame found on many fighters, which is an obstruction to a pilot's forward vision. The F-16's ACES 2-0-0 ejection seat is reclined at an unusual tilt back angle of 30 degrees, most fighters have a tilted seat at 13 to 15 degrees. The tilted seat can accommodate taller pilots and increases G-force tolerance, however it has been associated with reports of neck ache, possibly caused by incorrect headrest usage. Subsequent U.S. fighters have adopted more modest tilt back angles of 20 degrees. Due to the seat angle and the canopy's thickness, the ejection seat lacks canopy breakers for emergency egress, instead the entire canopy is jettisoned prior to the seat's rocket firing. The pilot flies primarily by means of an armrest-mounted side stick controller instead of a traditional center-mounted stick and an engine throttle. Conventional rudder pedals are also employed. To enhance the pilot's degree of control of the aircraft during high-G combat maneuvers, various switches and function controls were moved to centralized hands-on throttle and stick controls upon both the controllers and the throttle. 
Hand pressure on the side stick controller is transmitted by electrical signals via the FBW system to adjust various flight control surfaces to maneuver the F-16. Originally the side stick controller was non-moving, but this proved uncomfortable and difficult for pilots to adjust to, sometimes resulting in a tendency to «over-rotate» during takeoffs, so the control stick was given a small amount of «play». Since introduction on the F-16, HOTAS controls have become a standard feature on modern fighters. The F-16 has a head-up display HUD, which projects visual flight and combat information in front of the pilot without obstructing the view, being able to keep their head out of the cockpit, improves a pilot's situation awareness. Further flight and systems information are displayed on multifunction displays MFD. The left-hand MFD is the primary flight display PFD, typically showing radar and moving maps, the right-hand MFD is the system display SD, presenting information about the engine, landing gear, slat and flap settings, and fuel and weapon status. Initially, the F-16A, B had monochrome cathode ray tube court displays, replaced by color liquid crystal displays on the block 5050 seconds. The MLU introduced compatibility with night vision goggles NVG. The Boeing Joint Helmet Mounted Queuing System JHMCS is available from Block 40 onwards, for targeting based on where the pilot's head faces, unrestricted by the HUD, using high-off boresight missiles like the AIM-9X. <laughs> Fire Control Radar The F-16A, B was originally equipped with the Westinghouse and APG-66 fire control radar. Its slotted planar array antenna was designed to be compact to fit into the F-16's relatively small nose. In uplook mode, the APG-66 uses a low pulse repetition frequency PRF for medium and high altitude target detection in a low clutter environment, and in look down, shoot down employs a medium PRF for heavy clutter environments. It has four operating frequencies within the X-band, and provides four air-to-air -air and seven air-to-ground operating modes for combat, even at night or in bad weather. The Block 15's APG-66 V2 model added a more powerful signal processing, higher output power, improved reliability and increased range in cluttered or jamming environments. The Mid-Life Update MLU program introduced a new model, APG-66 V2A, which features higher speed and more memory. The AN, APG-68, an evolution of the APG-66, was introduced with the F-16C, D Block 25. The APG-68 has greater range and resolution, as well as 25 operating modes, including ground mapping, Doppler beam sharpening, ground moving target indication, C target, and track while scan TWS for up to 10 targets. The Block 40, 42's APG-68 V1 model added full compatibility with Lockheed Martin Low Altitude Navigation and Targeting Infrared for Night pods, and a high PRF pulse Doppler track mode to provide continuous wave radar CW target illumination for semi-active radar homing SARH missiles like the AIM-7 Sparrow. Block 5052nds F-16s initially used the more reliable APG-68 V-5 which has a programmable signal processor employing very high-speed integrated circuit VHSIC technology. The advanced Block 5052nds or 50 plus, 52 plus are equipped with the APG-68 V-9 radar, with a 30% greater air-to-air -air detection range and a synthetic aperture radar mode for high-resolution mapping and target detection recognition. 
In August 2004, Northrop Grumman were contracted to upgrade the APG-68 radars of Block 40 40 seconds, 50 50 seconds aircraft to the V-10 standard, providing all-weather autonomous detection and targeting for Global Positioning System GPS aided precision weapons, SAR mapping and terrain following radar TF modes, as well as interleaving of all modes. The F-16E, F is outfitted with Northrop Grumman's and APG G80 Active Electronically Scanned Array AESA radar. Northrop Grumman developed the latest AESA radar upgrade for the F-16 selected for USAF and Republic of China Air Force F-16 upgrades, named the Scalable Agile Beam Radar SABR. In July 2007, Raytheon announced that it was developing a next-generation radar RANGR based on its earlier an APG-79 AESA radar as a competitor to Northrop Grumman's an APG-68 and an APG-80 for the F-16. Topic propulsion The initial powerplant selected for the single-engined F-16 was the Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW200 afterburning turbofan, a modified version of the F-15's F-100 PW100, rated at 23,830 lbf thrust. During testing, the engine was found to be prone to compressor stalls and rollbacks, wherein the engine's thrust would spontaneously reduce to idle. Until resolved, the Air Force ordered F-16s to be operated within dead stick landing distance of its bases. It was the standard F-16 engine through the Block 25, except for the newly built Block 15s with the Operational Capability Upgrade OCU. The OCU introduced the 23,770 lbf kilonewtons F100 PW220, later installed on Block 32 and 42 aircraft, the main advance being a Digital Electronic Engine Control unit, which improved reliability and reduced stall occurrence. Beginning production in 1988, the -220 also supplanted the F15s -100 for commonality. Many of the -220 engines on block 25 and later aircraft were upgraded from 1997 onwards to the 220E standard, which enhanced reliability and maintainability. Unscheduled engine removals were reduced by 35%. The F-100 PW-220 220th C was the result of the USAF's alternate fighter engine program, colloquially known as the Great Engine War, which also saw the entry of General Electric as an F-16 engine provider. Its F-110GE-100 turbofan was limited by the original inlet to thrust of 25,735 lbf .5 .The modular common inlet duct allowed the F-110 to achieve its maximum thrust of 28,984 lbf .9 to distinguish between aircraft equipped with these two engines and inlets, from the Block 30 series on, blocks ending in 0 e.g., Block 30 are powered by GE, and blocks ending in 2 e.g., Block 32 are fitted with Pratt & Whitney engines. The increased performance engine IPE program led to the 29,588 lbf F110GE129 on the Block 50 and 29,160 lbf 129.4 kN F100 PW229 on the block 52 F16s began flying with these IPE engines in the early 1990s Altogether, of the 1,446 F-16Cs ordered by the USAF, 556 were fitted with F-100 series engines and 890 with F-110s. The United Arab Emirates Block 60 is powered by the General Electric F110GE132 turbofan with a maximum thrust of 32,500 lbf, 144.6 kilonewtons, the highest thrust engine developed for the F16. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Operational history. F-16s have participated in numerous conflicts, most of them in the Middle East. Topic: <laughs> United States. The F-16 is being used by the active duty USAF, Air Force Reserve, and Air National Guard units, the USAF Aerial Demonstration Team, the US Air Force Thunderbirds, and as an adversary aggressor aircraft by the United States Navy at the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center. The U.S. Air Force, including the Air Force Reserve and the Air National Guard, flew the F-16 in combat during Operation Desert Storm in 1991 and in the Balkans later in the 1990s. F-16s also patrolled the no-fly zones in Iraq during Operations Northern Watch and Southern Watch and served during the wars in Afghanistan Operation Enduring Freedom and Iraq Operation Iraqi Freedom from 2001 and 2003 respectively. In 2011, Air Force F-16s took part in the intervention in Libya. The F-16 had been scheduled to remain in service with the U.S. Air Force until 2025. Its replacement was planned to be the F-35A variant of the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, which is expected to gradually begin replacing several multi-role aircraft among the program's member nations. However, due to delays in the F-35 program, all USAF F-16s will receive service life extension upgrades. Israel. The F-16's first air-to-air -air combat success was achieved by the Israeli Air Force IAF, over the Bekaa Valley on 28 April 1981, against a Syrian Mi-8 helicopter, which was downed with cannon fire. On 7 June 1981, eight Israeli F-16s, escorted by six F-15s, executed Operation Opera, their first employment in a significant air-to-ground operation. This raid severely damaged a Syrac, an Iraqi nuclear reactor under construction near Baghdad, to prevent the regime of Saddam Hussein from using the reactor for the creation of nuclear weapons. The following year, during the 1982 Lebanon War, Israeli F 16s engaged Syrian aircraft in one of the largest air battles involving jet aircraft, which began on 9 June and continued for two more days. Israeli Air Force F 16s were credited with 44 air to air kills during the conflict. In January 2000, Israel completed a purchase of 102 new F 16I aircraft in a deal totaling $4.5 billion. F 16s were also used in their ground attack role for strikes against targets in Lebanon. IAF F-16s participated in the 2006 Lebanon War and the 2008–09 Gaza War. During and after the 2006 Lebanon War, IAF F-16s shot down Iranian-made UAVs launched by Hezbollah using Rafael Python 5 air-to-air -air missiles. On the 10th of February 2018, an Israeli Air Force F-16I was shot down in northern Israel when it was hit by a relatively old model S-200 NATO name SA-5 Gammon surface-to-air missile of the Syrian Air Defense Force. The pilot and navigator ejected safely in Israeli territory. The F-16I was part of a bombing mission against Syrian and Iranian targets around Damascus after an Iranian drone entered Israeli airspace and was shot down. An Israel Air Force investigation determined on 27 February 2018 that the loss was due to pilot error since the IAF determined the air crew did not adequately defend themselves. Topic. Pakistan During the Soviet–Afghan War, between May 1986 and January 1989, Pakistan Air Force F-16s shot down at least eight intruders from Afghanistan. The first three of these, two Afghan Su-22s and one and 26, were shot down by two pilots. 
Pakistani pilots also downed five other intruders, two Su-22s, two MiG-23s, and one Su-25. Most of these kills were by AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles, but at least one, and Su-22, was destroyed by cannon fire. Flight Lieutenant Khalid Mahmood is credited with three of these kills. One F-16 was lost in these battles during an encounter between two F-16s and four Soviet Air Force MiG-23s on 29 April 1987, the pilot ejected safely. The downed F-16 was likely hit accidentally by a sidewinder fired by the other F-16. On the 7th of June 2002, a Pakistan Air Force F-16 shot down an Indian unmanned aerial vehicle, the Israeli-made Searcher II, near Lahore. The Pakistan Air Force has used its F-16s in various foreign and internal military exercises, such as the Indus Vipers. Exercise in 2008 conducted jointly with Turkey. Between May 2009 and November 2011, the PAF F 16 fleet flew more than 5,500 sorties in support of the Pakistan Army's operations against the Taliban insurgency in the Fata region of northwest Pakistan. More than 80% of the dropped munitions were laser guided bombs. Turkey The Turkish Air Force acquired its first F-16s in 1987. Turkish F-16s participated in the Bosnia-Herzegovina and Kosovo since 1993 in support of United Nations resolutions. On the 18th of June 1992, a Greek Mirage F-1 crashed during a dogfight with a Turkish F-16. On 8 February 1995, a Turkish F-16 crashed into the Aegean after being intercepted by Greek Mirage F-1 fighters. On 8 October 1996, seven months after the escalation over IMIA, a Greek Mirage 2000 reportedly fired an R.550 Magic II missile and shot down a Turkish F-16D over the Aegean Sea. The Turkish pilot died, while the co-pilot ejected and was rescued by Greek forces. In August 2012, after the downing of a RF-4E on the Syrian coast, Turkish Defense Minister İsmet Yilmaz confirmed that the Turkish F-160 was shot down by a Greek Mirage 2000 with an R.550 Magic II in 1996 after violating Greek airspace near Shios Island. Greece denies that the F-16 was shot down. Both Mirage 2000 pilots reported that the F-16 caught fire and they saw one parachute. On the 23rd of May 2006, two Greek F-16s intercepted a Turkish RF-4 reconnaissance aircraft and two F-16 escorts off the coast of the Greek island of Karpathos within the Athens Fir. A mock dogfight ensued between the two sides, resulting in a mid-air collision between a Turkish F-16 and a Greek F-16. The Turkish pilot ejected safely, but the Greek pilot died due to damage caused by the collision. Five days before the incident, a Turkish F-16 pilot was doing dangerous maneuvers, while being intercepted by Greek F-16 fighters, attempting to hit a Greek fighter. Turkey used its F-16s extensively in its conflict with separatist Kurds in southeastern parts of Turkey and Iraq. Turkey launched its first cross-border raid on 16 December 2007, a prelude to the 2008 Turkish incursion into northern Iraq, involving 50 fighters before Operation Sun. This was the first time Turkey had mounted a night bombing operation on a massive scale, and also the largest operation conducted by Turkish Air Force. During the Syrian Civil War, Turkish F 16s were tasked with airspace protection on the Syrian border. After the RF-4 downing in June 2012 Turkey changed its rules of engagements against Syrian aircraft, resulting in scrambles and downings of Syrian combat aircraft. On 16 September 2013, a Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Syrian Arab Air Force Mil Mi-17 helicopter in Latakia province near the Turkish border. 
On 23 March 2014, a Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Syrian Arab Air Force Mikoyan Gurevic MiG-23 when it allegedly entered Turkish air space during a ground attack mission against Al-Qaeda-linked insurgents. On 16 May 2015, two Turkish Air Force F-16s shot down a Syrian Mohaya 4 UAV firing two AIM-9 missiles after it trespassed into Turkish airspace for five minutes. A Turkish Air Force F-16 shot down a Russian Air Force Sukhoi Su-24 on the Turkey-Syria border on 24 November 2015. Egypt On 16 February 2015, Egyptian F-16 struck jihadi weapons caches and training camps in Libya in retaliation for the murder of 21 Egyptian Coptic Christian construction workers by masked militants affiliated with the Islamic State ISIS. The air strikes killed 64 ISIS fighters, including three leaders in Derna and Sirte on the coast. Others The Royal Netherlands Air Force, Belgian Air Force, Royal Danish Air Force, Royal Norwegian Air Force, and Venezuela Air Force have flown the F-16 on combat missions. A Yugoslavian MiG-29 was shot down by a Dutch F-16AM during the Kosovo War in 1999. Belgian and Danish F-16s also participated in joint operations over Kosovo during the war. Dutch, Belgian, Danish, and Norwegian F-16s were deployed during the 2011 intervention in Libya and in Afghanistan. In Libya, Norwegian F-16s dropped almost 550 bombs and flew 596 missions, some 17% of the total strike missions including the bombing of Muammar Gaddafi's headquarters. The Royal Moroccan Air Force and the Royal Bahraini Air Force, each lost a single F-16C, both shot down by how this anti-aircraft fire during the Saudi Arabian-led intervention in Yemen, respectively on the 11th of May 2015 and on the 30th of December 2015 in late March 2018 Croatia announced its intention to purchase 12 used Israeli F16C D Barak Breakeat jets pending US approval Acquiring these F-16s would allow Croatia to retire its aging MiG-21s. On the 11th of July 2018, Slovakia's government approved the purchase of 14 F-16s Block 70 seconds to replace its aging fleet of Soviet-made MiG-29s. A contract was signed on the 12th of December 2018 in Bratislava. Topic. Variants F-16 models are denoted by increasing block numbers to denote upgrades. The blocks cover both single and two-seat versions. A variety of software, hardware, systems, weapons compatibility, and structural enhancements have been instituted over the years to gradually upgrade production models and retrofit delivered aircraft. While many F-16s were produced according to these block designs, there have been many other variants with significant changes, usually due to modification programs. Other changes have resulted in role specialization, such as the close air support and reconnaissance variants. Several models were also developed to test new technology. The F-16 design also inspired the design of other aircraft, which are considered derivatives. Older F-16s are being converted into QF-16 drone targets. F-16A, B The F-16A and F-16B were initial production variants. These variants include the Block 1, 5, 10 and 20 versions. Block 15 was the first major change to the F-16 with larger horizontal stabilizers. It is the most numerous of all F-16 variants with 475 produced. Many F-16A and B aircraft have been upgraded to the Mid-Life Upgrade MLU Block 20 standard, becoming functionally equivalent to mid-production C.D models. 
F16C D the F16C single seat and F16D two seat variants entered production in 1984. The first C.D. version was the Block 25 with improved cockpit avionics and radar which added all-weather capability with Beyond Visual Range BVR AIM-7 and AIM-120 air-air missiles. Block 30 30 seconds, 40 40 seconds, and 50 50 seconds were later C.D. versions. The F-16C.D. had a unit cost of $18.8 million Operational cost per flight hour has been estimated at $7,000 to $22,470 or $24,000, depending on calculation method. F16E F. The F16E single seat and F16F two seat are newer F16 Block 60 variants based on the F16C D Block 50 50 seconds. The United Arab Emirates invested heavily in its development. It features improved an APG-80 active electronically scanned array AESA radar, avionics, conformal fuel tanks CFTs, and the more powerful General Electric F110GE-132 engine. F16IN for the Indian MRCA competition for the Indian Air Force, Lockheed Martin offered the F-16IN Super Viper. The F-16IN is based on the F-16E, F Block 60 and features conformal fuel tanks, an APG-80 AESA radar, GEF-110 GE-132A engine with FADEC controls, electronic warfare suite and infrared search and track unit, updated glass cockpit, and a helmet-mounted queuing system. As of 2011, the F-16IN is no longer in the competition. In 2016, Lockheed Martin offered the new F-16 Block 70 70 seconds version to India under the Make in India program. In 2016, Indian government offered to purchase 200 potentially up to 300 fighters in a deal worth $13-15 bn. As of 2017, Lockheed Martin has agreed to manufacture F-16 Block 70 fighters in India with the Indian defence firm Tata Advanced Systems Limited. The new production line could be used to build F-16s for India and for exports. On 25 November 2017, Sputnik reported that the Indian government wanted to remove the single engine criteria and focus on the fighter capabilities instead. F 16 IQ In September 2010, the Defense Security Cooperation Agency informed the United States Congress of a possible foreign military sale of 18 F 16 IQ aircraft along with the associated equipment and services to the newly reformed Iraqi Air Force. Total value of sale is estimated at $4.2 billion. F 16N The F 16N was an adversary aircraft operated by the U.S. Navy. It is based on the standard F 16C D Block 30 and is powered by the General Electric F 110GE 100 engine, and is capable of supercruise. The F-16N has a strengthened wing and is capable of carrying an air combat maneuvering instrumentation pod on the starboard wingtip. Although the single-seat F-16Ns and twin-seat T F-16Ns are based on the early production small inlet Block 30 F-16C, D airframe, they retain the APG-66 radar of the F-16A, B. In addition, the aircraft's 20 mm cannon has been removed, as has the ASPJ, and they carry no missiles. Their U fit consists of an ALR 69 radar warning receiver RWR and an AL 40 chaff flare dispenser. The F 16Ns and TF 16Ns have the standard Air Force tailhook and undercarriage and are not aircraft carrier capable. Production totaled 26 airframes, of which 22 are single-seat F-16Ns and 4 are twin-seat TF-16Ns. The initial batch of aircraft were in service between 1988 and 1998. 
At that time, hairline cracks were discovered in several bulkheads and the Navy did not have the resources to replace them, so the aircraft were eventually retired, with one aircraft sent to the collection of the National Naval Aviation Museum at NAS Pensacola, Florida, and the remainder placed in storage at Davis Munthen AFB. These aircraft were later replaced by embargoed ex-Pakistani F-16s in 2003. The original inventory of F-16Ns were previously operated by adversary squadrons at NAS Oceana, Virginia, NAS Key West, Florida and the former NAS Miramar, California. The current F-16A, B aircraft are operated by the Naval Strike and Air Warfare Center at NAS Fallon, Nevada. F-16V at the 2012 Singapore Air Show Lockheed Martin unveiled plans for the new F-16V variant with the V suffix for its Viper nickname. It features an, an APG-83 active electronically scanned array AESA radar, a new mission computer and electronic warfare suite, automated ground collision avoidance system, and various cockpit improvements. This package is an option on current production F-16s and can be retrofitted to most in-service F-16s. First flight took place the 21st of October 2015. Lockheed and AIDC both invested in the development of the aircraft and will share revenue from all sales and upgrades. Upgrades to Taiwan's F-16 fleet began in January 2017. The first country to confirm the purchase of 16 new F-16V Block 7070 seconds was Bahrain. Slovakia announced on the 11th of July 2018 that it intends to purchase 14 F-16 Block 70 70 seconds aircraft. Lockheed Martin has redesignated the F-16V Block 70 as the F-21 in its offering for India's fighter requirement. Taiwan announced on 19 March 2019 that it formally requested the purchase of an additional 66 F-16V jets, QF-16. In September 2013, Boeing and the U.S. Air Force tested an unmanned F-16, with two U.S. Air Force pilots controlling the airplane from the ground as it flew from Tyndall AFB over the Gulf of Mexico. Topic. Related developments Vought Model 1600 Proposed naval variant General Dynamics F-16 Vista 1990s Experimental Fighter General Dynamics F-16XL 1980s Technology Demonstrator Mitsubishi F-2 1990s Japanese multi-role fighter based on the F-16. Topic: Operators. By July 2010, there had been 4,500 F-16s delivered. Topic: Former operators. Italy, Italian Air Force leased up to 30 F-16As and 4 F-16Bs from the USAF from 2001 until 2012. Topic: Notable accidents and incidents. The F-16 has been involved in over 650 hull loss accidents as of June 2016. On 8 May 1975, while practicing a 9G aerial display maneuver with the second YF-16 tail number 72-1568 at Fort Worth, Texas, prior to being sent to the Paris Air Show, one of the main landing gears jammed. The test pilot, Neil Anderson, had to perform an emergency gear-up landing and chose to do so in the grass, hoping to minimize damage and to avoid injuring any observers. The aircraft was only slightly damaged, but due to the mishap the first prototype was sent to the Paris Air Show in its place. 
On 15 November 1982, while on a training flight outside Kunsan Air Base in South Korea, USAF Captain Ted Harduval died when he crashed inverted into a mountain ridge. In 1985, Harduval's widow filed a lawsuit against General Dynamics claiming an electrical malfunction, not pilot error, as the cause. A jury awarded the plaintiff $3.4 million in damages. However, in 1989, the U.S. Court of Appeals ruled the contractor had immunity to lawsuits, overturning the previous judgment. The court remanded the case to the trial court for entry of judgment in favor of General Dynamics." The accident and subsequent trial was the subject of the 1992 film Afterburn. On 23 March 1994, during a joint Army Air Force exercise at Pope AFB, North Carolina, F-160 AF serial number of the 23D Fighter Wing, 74th Fighter Squadron was simulating an engine out approach when it collided with a USAF C-130E. Both F-16 crew members ejected, but their aircraft, on full afterburner, continued on an arc towards Green Ramp and struck a USAF C-141 that was being boarded by U.S. Army paratroopers. This accident resulted in 24 fatalities and at least 100 others injured. It has since been known as the Green Ramp Disaster. On 15 September 2003, a USAF Thunderbird F-16C crashed during an air show at Mountain Home AFB, Idaho. Captain Christopher Strickland attempted a «split S» maneuver based on an incorrect mean sea level altitude of the airfield. Climbing to only 1,670 feet 510 meters above ground level instead of 2,500 feet 760 meters, Strickland had insufficient altitude to complete the maneuver, but was able to guide the aircraft away from spectators and ejected less than one second before impact. Strickland survived with only minor injuries, the aircraft was destroyed. USAF procedure for demonstration Split S maneuvers was changed, requiring both pilots and controllers to use above ground level (AGL) altitudes. On the 26th of January 2015, a Greek F-160 crashed while performing a NATO training exercise in Albacete, Spain. Both crew members and nine French soldiers on the ground died when it crashed in the flight line, destroying or damaging two Italian AMXs, two French Alpha jets, and one French Mirage 2000. On 7 July 2015, an F-16CJ collided with a Cessna 150M over Monk's Corner, South Carolina, U.S. The pilot of the F-16 ejected safely, but both people in the Cessna were killed. On 17 May 2019, a F-16 crashed into a warehouse near March Air Reserve Base in Paris, California. The pilot ejected before impact. A small fire broke out but was quickly suppressed. Aircraft on display Topic: Belgium. F-16AFA01 on display at the Royal Museum of the Armed Forces and Military History in Brussels, Belgium. FA55 on display at the Château de Savigny les Bones in Bonne, France. A former Belgian Air Force example. FA113 on display at Beauvichain Air Base. Germany F-16 A-78057 pylon display at Spangdalem AB, Germany Israel F-16AF-16A Nets 107 on display at the Israeli Air Force Museum in Hatzram Air Base, Beersheba this F-16 was credited with 6.5 shot downs of enemy aircraft and took part in Operation Opera in which the Iraqi nuclear reactor was destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> 
Topic: Japan. F16A780053 pylon display at Masawa AB, Japan. Topic: Portugal. F16A15150 on display at Monte Real Air Base, Portugal. Topic: The Netherlands. F16AJ215 of the RNLAF on display at the National Military Museum at former airbase Soesterberg. J228 of the RNLAF on pylon display at the Leeuwarden Airbase Main Gate Entry Road. J240 of the RNLAF on pylon display past the Volkel Airbase Main Gate on the Entry Road. J246 of the RNLAF on pylon display on the N264, Zeelandstick roundabout near the Volkel Airbase main gate entry. <inaudible> <inaudible> Serbia F16CG880550 F16CG at Museum of Aviation, Belgrade Topic Turkey F sixteen C eighty nine oh oh three two F one six C block forty A at Istanbul Aviation Museum Topic United States YF one six seven two one five six seven Virginia Air and Space Center, Hampton, VIRGINIA YF sixteen B seventy five oh seven five two Frontiers of Flight Museum, Dallas, TEXASF sixteen A seventy five oh seven four six Pylon Mounted Gate Guard, McIntyre Air National Guard Base, South Carolina seventy five oh seven four eight Cadet Area Quadrangle, US Air Force Academy Academy, Colorado 750750 on display at the Experimental Aircraft Display Hangar, National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright Patterson AFB, Ohio 780001 Langley AFB Memorial Park, Langley AFB, Virginia. First production model F16A delivered to USAF. 780005162D Fighter Wing Park, Tucson Air National Guard Base, Arizona 780025 Valiant Air Command Warbird Museum, Titusville, FL. Formerly a gate guard, Burlington Air National Guard Base, Vermont 780042 Gate Guard, Montgomery Air National Guard Base, Danley Field, Alabama 780052 Ailson AFB Heritage Park, Ailson AFB, Alaska 780059 Selfridge Military Air Museum and Air Park, Selfridge ANGB, Michigan 780065388TH Fighter Wing and 419th Fighter Wing Combined Headquarters, Hill AFB, Utah 780066 on display in Kansas Air National Guard Memorial Park Area, McConnell AFB, Kansas 790290 on display at Great Falls Air National Guard Base, Montana. 790296 Gate Guard, Jacksonville Air National Guard Base, Florida 790307 on display at Cannon AFB Air Park, Cannon AFB, New Mexico 790309 Base Park Area adjacent to USAFCENT Headquarters, Shaw AFB, South Carolina. Painted as 20th Fighter Wing F16C930534. Memorial to Major Brinson Phillips, 20 FW, killed 19 March 2000 while flying F-16 C-9305347903 on pylon display, 8th Street Park, Douglas, Arizona 790326 Gate Guard, Homestead Air Reserve Base, Florida 790327 Pedestal Mounted Memorial, Luke AFB, Arizona. 
painted in 302 D fighter squadron markings, to include World War II Tuskegee Airmen, Red Tails, Empennage 790334, Ars Alabama Battleship Memorial Park, Mobile Alabama 790337 Ground Mobile Static Display Aircraft, normally located at Hancock Field Air National Guard Base, New York. Used by New York Air National Guard's 174th Attack Wing, former 174th Fighter Wing, at fairs and expositions for Air National Guard recruiting. 790352 on static display with 23D Wing at Moody AFB, Georgia 790366 Memorial Park static display, Mountain Home AFB, Idaho 790373 on display at Buckley AFB, Colorado. Aircraft painted in markings of Colorado Air National Guard's 140th Fighter Wing based at Buckley AFB. 790388 Hill Aerospace Museum, Hill AFB, Utah 790402 Hill Aerospace Museum, Hill AFB, Utah 790403 Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum, New York City New York AT0481 Display on Parade Ground, Shepard AFB, Texas 80527 Former Arizona Air National Guard 162D Fighter Wing Aircraft destined for transfer to display at the Pima Air and Space Museum, Tucson, Arizona. 80528 City Park in Pinellas Park, Florida. Painted in markings of 56th Tactical Training Wing cum 56th Fighter Wing, previously assigned to nearby MacDill AFB in the 1980s and early 1990s. 80573 Air Force Armament Museum, Eglin AFB, Florida. 80612 Memorial Park Static Display at Puerto Rico National Guards Camp Santiago, Salinas, Puerto Rico. Former Puerto Rico Air National Guard F 16 ADF, painted in markings of PRANG's former 198th Fighter Squadron, but marked as 81612. 810663 on display in United States Air Force Thunderbirds markings at the National Museum of the United States Air Force, Wright Patterson AFB, Dayton, Ohio. 810676 Museum of Aviation, Robbins AFB, Warner Robbins, Georgia 810721 MacDill AFB Memorial Park, MacDill AFB, Florida. Former Florida Air National Guard 125th Fighter Wing F-16 ADF repainted in markings of a 56th Fighter Wing F-16A previously assigned to MacDill in the 1980s. 810807 on display at Minnesota Air National Guard Museum, St. Paul, Minnesota. 820926 on display at Fargo Air National Guard Base, Fargo, North Dakota. 820930 on display at Ellington Field Joint Reserve Base, Houston, Texas on display at Naval Aviation Station Wildwood Museum in Cape May, NJ. 08204F16B780088 on display at the Naval Air Station Wildwood Aviation Museum, Cape May County Airport, New Jersey 780101 on display at United States Space Camp, Aviation Challenge, Huntsville, Alabama 780107 on display adjacent to Parade Ground, Lackland AFB, Texas 790430 Stafford Air and Space Museum, Weatherford, Oklahoma 80 80633 Yanks Air Museum, Chino, California. 810816 Pylon Display Gate Guard, Atlantic City Air National Guard Base, New Jersey 810817 Russell Military Museum, Russell, Illinois, F-16C 831126 Pylon Display at Hill Memorial Park, Hill AFB, Utah 84-1264 Air Park Display, Fort Wayne Air National Guard Station, Indiana. Aircraft retains Air Force Heritage Paint Scheme honoring 358th Fighter Group during World War II, 84-1393 Pylon Display at Texas National Guards Camp Mabry, Austin, Texas. 
Former Texas Air National Guard 147th Fighter Wing, 111th Fighter Squadron Aircraft. 85-1469 Static Display at Joe Foss Field Air National Guard Station, South Dakota 870323 Preserved as Thunderbird 1 in front of the USAF Air Demonstration Squadron, United States Air Force Thunderbirds Hangar, Nellis AFB, Nevada. Assigned to Thunderbirds in the 1992-2008 timeframe. Had number one attached on the 11th of June 1999, number two in the 2004 season, number three on the 3rd of March 2003, and number four on the 1st of April 2005. F16N163269, San Diego Aerospace Museum, San Diego, California, 163,271 Pacific Coast Air Museum, Santa Rosa, California, 160. 3277 Palm Springs Air Museum, Palm Springs, California 163569 NAS Fort Worth JRB, Fort Worth, Texas. It is painted in USAFR colors of the 457th FS, 301st FW. 163572 National Naval Aviation Museum, Naval Air Station Pensacola, Pensacola, Florida 163576 Air Power Park, Naval Air Station Fallon, Nevada Topic specifications F-16C Block 50, data from USAF Sheet, International Directory of Military Aircraft General Characteristics Length, 49 feet 5 in, 15.06 meters, wingspan, 32 feet 8 in, 9.96 meters, height, 16 feet, 4.9 meters, wing area, 300 square feet, 28 square meters, airfoil, NACA 64A204 empty weight, 18,900 pounds, 8,573 kilograms, gross weight, 26,500 pounds, 12,020 kilograms, max takeoff weight, 42,300 pounds, 19,187 kilograms, fuel capacity, 7,000 pounds, 3,200 kilograms, internals power plant, one times General Electric F110 GE129 after burning turbofan engine, 17,155 lbf 76.31 kN, thrust 29,588 lbf, 132 kN, wet or 1x Pratt & Whitney F100 PW220, 220 e 29,160 lbf, 130 kN, wet performance maximum speed, 795 knots, 900 15 miles per hour, 1,472 kilometers per hour, M1.2 at sea level, 1,147 knots, 1,320 miles per hour, 2,124 kilometers per hour, M2.0. Clean configuration at altitude combat range, 295 nmi, 339 miles, 546 kilometers, on a high-low high mission with four. 4 by 1000 pounds 454 kilograms bombs ferry range 2277 nmi 2620 miles 4217 kilometers with drop tank service ceiling 50000 feet 15000 meters plus g limits plus 9 limited by flying control system rate of climb 50000 feet per minute 250 meters per second wing loading 80 88.3 pounds per square foot, 431 kilograms per square meter. Thrust, weight, 1.095 lbf per pound, 0.01074 kilonewtons per kilogram, 1.24 lbf per pound, 0.0122 kilonewtons per kilogram. At loaded weight with 50% internal fuel, armament guns, 1 times 20 millimeters, 0. 
787 in M61A1 Falcon 6 barrel rotary cannon, 511 rounds hard points, 2 times wing tip air to air missile launch rails, 6 times under wing and 3 times under fuselage pylon, 2 of 3 for sensors, stations with a capacity of up to 17,000 pounds, 7,700 kilograms of stores, rockets, 4 times LAU 61, LAU 68 rocket pods each with 9 Seventeen sevenths times Hydra seventy millimeters APKWS rockets, respectively, four times Lau five zero zero three rocket pods, each with nineteen times CRV seven seventy millimeters rockets, four times Lau ten rocket pods, each with four times Zuni one hundred and twenty seven millimeters rockets, missiles, air to air missiles, two times AIM seven Sparrow six times AIM nine Sidewinder six times AIM one hundred and twenty AMRAA. M six times Iris T six times Python four six times Python five air to surface missiles six times AGM sixty five Maverick four times AGM eighty eight Harm AGM one hundred and fifty eight joint air to surface standoff missile JASSM anti ship missiles two times AGM eighty four Harpoon four times AGM one hundred and nineteen Penguin bombs eight times CBU eighty seven combined effects munition 8 times CBU 89 Gator Mine 8 times CBU 97 Sensor Fused Weapon 4 times Mark 84 General Purpose Bombs 8 times Mark 83 GP Bombs 12 times Mark 82 GP Bombs 8 times GBU 39 Small Diameter Bomb SDB 4 times GBU 10 Paveway 2 6 times GBU 12 Paveway 2 4 times GBU 24 Paveway 3 4 times GBU 27 Paveway 3 4 times Joint Direct Attack Munition JDAM Series 4 times AGM 154 Joint Standoff Weapon JSOW Wind Corrected Munitions Dispenser WCMD B61 Nuclear Bomb B83 Nuclear Bomb Others SUU42A A Flares Infrared Decoys Dispenser Pod and Chaff Pod or an ALQ131 and an ALQ100 184 ECM pods or LANTIRN, Lockheed Martin Sniper XR and LITENING targeting pods or up to 3 times 300 and 330 37600 US gallon Sergeant Fletcher drop tanks for ferry flight, extended range, loitering time or UTC aerospace DB110 long range EO, IR sensor pod on centerline avionics and APG 68 Radar Mill STD one five five three bus. Topic Notable appearances in media. Topic See also RSAF Black Knights F sixteen aerobatic team. List of active United States military aircraft List of fighter aircraft